And you're welcome back to the third and final part of today's show. I had Dara just here for this last part, but I'm not alone. I'm delighted to be joined by Tyg Leader. Tyg, it's great to have you back on the show. I believe the last time we spoke was actually February for a Super Bowl show. So how have you been? Yeah, yeah. Um, cheers. Thanks for having me back again. Uh, a lot's happened on my end, actually. Not thinking back, yeah, since the Super Bowl, which I'm sure we we'll get into. But yeah. On my end, all as well, and um, yeah, happy to be chatting away with you. Excellent stuff. We're delighted, like I said, to have you back on. You are on today because we are talking about Ireland's Kicking King, the uh, tournament, of course, that you were running in association with the College Football Ireland and Aer Lingus, trying to find the next uh, kicker to come out of Ireland, looking at soccer, GAA, um rugby all current players who may be interested in it but for anyone that hasn't heard anything about it so far maybe just give us a, a brief overview and on, on what this is about yeah yeah and, and it's, it's just a, with the college game happening in august 27th up in the aviva and there's obviously a bit of hype building around football here so it was just an opportunity for me to, to uh, come back home for a few weeks and you know running running this initiative basically where for irish the, a lot of it was the most obvious way for us to be involved in football. American football um, is kicking just because of our <clears throat> because of our rugby, Gaelic soccer background. You know, we can strike a ball, and um, whereas we're not, you know, the Americans they're full of th- they're throwing so much basketball, baseball, things like that. Obviously, football. Um, so a lot of Irish people have been kind of showing interest in kicking and punting and things like that. So w- with Aer Lingus and the college football game going on, just kind of running events around Ireland to. I guess, A, introduce people to, to kicking uh, just in a fun kind of fun way. But for the for those that show kind of good ability and talent, you know, this, they're, they're getting the opportunity maybe to go a bit further. Um, and with that, you know, they're, they're going to get to go to the game in the Aviva and the best few kickers will actually get to kick at halftime live in front of, you know, 40, 50,000 people for a chance. Aer Lingus are comping nice prizes over to, to get flights over to um, Chicago. So, yeah, for me, it's just about introducing people to the game, and you know, thankfully, there's a few nice little, little prizes to be attached to it all. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> we've had a few dates already. Um, um, we've you've been to Galway, and I think was one of the Dublin dates already as well. So far, yeah. we we've got uh, so leading up to say this weekend, especially with um Saturday and Sunday, you're in Cork and Limerick. Then next week. You're in Belfast on the 25th on the Friday, Dublin again on the 26th on the sat on the sorry on the Thursday Belfast. Saturday is Dublin the 26th Hold or Friday sorry, and uh, Saturday itself is the Aviva game itself. So that's where, yeah. like you mentioned, the best kickers will um, be taking part in halftime there. How has uh, how has the turnout and the interest been since uh, this has been announced? The um... Yeah, a lot, lot, lot of interest, which is kind of what I was hoping for. And um, kind of mentioned off air there, you know, got the chance to do some kicking stuff with uh, some of the GA lads, uh, which, is really, which is really good to, I guess, create more exposure. <clears throat> and, you know, so far, the, the event we had in Galway um, was class because not too surprisingly, like lads, lads were, were stroking the balls over from, you know, back into the 50s, 50 yards kind of thing. So, load of talented kickers out there and yeah so so far really good i guess my big thing is just trying to create as much awareness to people and um it's you know it's it's open it's open to anyone uh male female 16 plus in in terms of age so you don't necessarily have to see yourself as the potential to be ireland's best kicker you might just want to come along and you'll kick because you're curious um and just you know just do that in itself but obviously for some they'll get to kind of go through more stages and um, the, the prizes and things like that but for me it's just about introducing Irish people to kicking um, because it's something that I never got to do here in Ireland and you know had something like this been happening I, I personally I would have jumped at it because I you know I just lo- love kicking balls whatever shape it is um, so I guess for me I'm just trying to create an event that will, might appeal to those people and again just light-hearted a bit of fun and if you go further great it, it can become a little bit more serious if you want to yeah and that's the thing it, it does introduce people to this this uh, this game over on the island here because as popular as the nfl is becoming it, it's something that maybe isn't um as well known that there is a league over here that there is teams over here so if they do enjoy going to the workshop uh the the, your workshop that they can then look at maybe if there is a team in the local area that they can continue that on that and like that that would be when I first kind of got in touch with the, um, the kind of college football game that's going on, the organizers, and then a little bit with the AFI, 
Um, that was like I was saying the best case. You know, that'd be such a good outcome, wouldn't it? That that people dig. and like you might come along to kick, you enjoy it, and all of a sudden you you kind of find your local team, and then you know you could find yourself playing wide receiver or playing a different position because you know things will just trickle naturally from there. I think. Um, so yeah, so the, the, that would be huge if if it could help the domestic game because it is so good. I know the Shamrock Bowl was on there recently up up in Raven Hill, and um, there's so much happening. So yeah, like, like that would be a great outcome if if more people who got introduced to the sport through these events. And then uh, funnel into the the domestic game, the clubs, and try and you know um, add a bit of uh, I guess numbers and exposure to that as well. It'd be great. Yeah, exactly, and and like you mentioned there, the Ireland's kicking king at uh, various dates. Um, if you go to your Twitter, I believe they can find the latest on that too. Um, we'll we'll give the yeah. details out at the end of the interview there as well. And um, but plenty of there, like you mentioned, the first prize is at. Uh, two tickets to go see a Northwestern game as well. So definitely worth uh, throwing your hat in the ring and seeing if you can try and win those tickets. Yeah, no, exactly. And and it was funny because the event there we had in Galway, you know, the, the three winners who thankfully are linkers are given are the college football game. Now they're giving us all premium tickets to the game. So all the tickets I'm giving out are, you know, you get to see the game from the you know, the premium say section. So that's, that's grand, isn't it? But uh, yeah. the three winners were a 17 year old rugby player, I think a 25 year old soccer player and a 32 year old like junior C Gaelic footballer. So, you know, for someone like say the 30 something year old junior C Gaelic footballer, you know, if, if he does what he did in Galway again in Dublin, he'd very likely be kicking in front of 40,000, 50,000 people in the stadium. And I think that's class, you know, like people that might necessarily get the opportunity to be in those arenas doing those things. Um, so that's what I'm hoping. There's a bit of diversity in those that go through to the stages. And then, yeah, the, the prizes, the prize, again, we can't say enough positive things about uh, the college football group and Aer Lingus for being so generous and giving out giving out these great prizes yeah mm-hmm. and, and did you find like I know it's a small sample size because there's only been a certain go away event so far you yeah. probably know more after this weekend but even meeting and talking to the people that went to the Galway event did you get this sense that these were NFL fans looking to get into it or were they were just saying coming down to see what say what the crack was all about but uh, both I had a lad come in from uh, Aaron Islands, so uh, so he, he flew in for the game, uh, for the kicking event in Galway in in the city, and Joe, you know, he's a huge NFL fan. He said he saw about it, not like he plays Gaelic football, huge football, huge NFL fan, college football fan. So he, you know, he was hoping to come along and um, kick well and just enjoy it, and you know, he might win tickets. As it turned out, he did. Um, and then we also just had lads that didn't know much about football but loved kicking. You know, Gaelic football, rugby, soccer players. And uh, they come along did really well too. So it, you know, it's, it's great that it can kind of appeal to a pretty, pretty broad, I guess, uh, set of people. And my biggest thing for me is again just making it fun and just a, like a fun introductory introduction to the sport. And you know, hopefully on the back of that, you know, as we mentioned already, think you know, good things will come and will help the Irish domestic game. But yeah, it, it's it's been cool to see huge football fans as well as people that know nothing about it, but they like kicking. So you know, they're coming along too. Yeah, and we must mention as well. You did uh, tweet out a video of your transportation for for this part, and we're I think we're actually getting a, an interview from inside it <laughs> at the moment. And um, we'll say very well decked out, very nice. Um, and you had your travel buddy, but unfortunately, like you met, we talked a little bit off air that um, your travel buddy was not able to make the journey with you. No, unfortunately, Hugo suffered a leg injury, so he can't be doing much kicking. He has a. He had a little, uh, two small little broken bones in his leg, which are healing. He's healing fine. But uh, as I was heading out, heading out the driveway, my mom shouted at me to come back because uh, Hugo has to see has to see the vet on Friday. So unfortunately, I'm solo here. But yeah, uh, the camper and stuff's grand, so it's pretty comfortable. And it's a, it's a nice way to kind of get around Ireland as well, right? So I'm, I'm going to take it up to to Belfast in a few, uh, next week. I'm thinking of the 24th. I'm up there, so uh, hopefully, hopefully Hugo can make that trip with me. Fingers crossed, anyway, and we yeah, like you saying, we hope Hugo has a nice recovery uh, for sure. But let's uh, move on. Let's talk a little bit actually about yourself because, um, like you mentioned, we we talked we we talked back in February. A lot has happened since then. You've had the chance now to go over to Canada and play in the CFL, and by all accounts, it did extremely well. Um, how was the experience over in Canada? Class, honestly, like um. For me, my exposure to football kind of growing up for the last few years has always been watching Hard Knocks. Uh, I'm sure most people that are football fans know Hard Knocks. And it was just gas to be... I mean, I wasn't in the NFL, I was in the CFL, but 
I felt like I was in hard knocks because everything was the same. Um, so th- like that in itself was it was just a gas experience for me. And um, you know, none of the lads had come across an Irish fella before coming through training camp. So that was uh, it was different, but it was good. Um, a lot of kind of learning and figuring out the kind of culture. And I think there was probably 80, 90 lads. So every day guys are getting cut. Um, you guys coming in, it was, it was a lot going on. But from my perspective, um, there's three kickers. And I, I got to, you know, I got to, statistically, I was the highest kicker through training camp. Uh, my only kick I got in the game was a, was a game winner, which I thankfully took. So, um, but unfortunately, I got released, which is, is, which I was kind of scratching my head a little bit at the time thinking, you know, I, I did, I put the ball through the post more than anyone. Isn't that the job? But unfortunately, being not having a college career to fall back on didn't necessarily help me in terms of uh, experience. But look, it is what it is. I, I had a great experience overall and I managed to gain, gain a lot of um, val- valuable uh, tape, which is uh, foot, uh, highlights, you know, um, training tape because it, it's playing in Europe was great, but it's, it's still a little bit... Um, the Americans and Canadians are still sometimes a little bit sceptical in terms of maybe the level you're playing at. So now having your know, got footage of me performing in in the CFL, that's been very valuable and um, confident that's going to open up you know doors for me. You know, in the next two three months, all going well. Yeah, and, and like that, that's important to have that sort of tape. And uh, we've seen there just with the draft this year, um, with the likes of. of you know, Dan Whelan and James McCourt that were taken on by the Saints and the Chargers respectively. And like I said, Dan, unfortunately, um, was cut um, before training camp. But uh, James is currently still there. He actually uh, kicked a extra point at the weekend in the Chargers mm-hmm. preseason game too. So it is important for them to know in case it happens like that, where they don't make it to the final 53 man roster that they will have this important tape that that can take them forward. And that is not just the end. Exactly. And to be honest with you, you know, when I was, when I was kind of having that exit meeting, I was thinking, Oh Jesus, like what, what now? Um, but then pretty quickly, Got to, got to talk to a lot of the kind of lads that have been the uh, NFL and CFL as kickers, and they were just saying like, this pretty much everyone gets cut, especially kickers, unfortunately, because the kickers tend to be older, so a younger kicker tends to get cut. Um, even though I'm thirty, I'm you know only a year in the sport, a uh, year or so. So, but like getting 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 training camp footage because you're getting live reps, and they're highly pressurized reps, you know, because everything's recorded, everything's started, and as I saw, maybe the fourth or fifth day of training camp for but where I was, um, one of the lads, he was ahead of me in the depth chart. He was second in the depth chart. He maybe missed two kicks in training one day. Then the next day, he missed his first kick. And then I kept scoring. So then, you know, he was that evening, you know, I'm going to the elevator and he's there with his bags, uh, head, getting flown home. So it's it's a highly pre- high pressurized environment. So if you perform well in camp, and obviously the Irish lads that are involved now in the NFL are, are doing well. So if they, if they, even if what you're told basically in the NFL is through training camp, you're auditioning for the other 31 teams as well. It's not just the team you're at because it's the tape is so valuable. It, your agent gets in touch with the team. So thankfully for me, I got good tape and um, fingers crossed that the, a door opens soon. Yeah, and it is the unfortunate, um, you know, pitfall of the position that you play and, and the lads play too, that there is only really one spot yeah. For or for that position, it's not like a wide receiver where you can have five or six people there, and you could just you could make it. So it is tough, but like I said, there it, it isn't just the NFL anymore. Thankfully, um, like that you had a chance to go to the CFL. We saw the USFL do mm. quite well this off season, and we have the XFL coming back again. So yeah. there's definitely loads of different avenues to go down. Uh, there's more. There's more op- opportunity now than ever. I mean, one year ago it was NFL CFL. Now we have NFL, CFL, USFL, and then starting uh, the week after the Super Bowl ends, actually, the XFL is is starting. It literally, camp starts late December. So personally, quite hopeful. I've had some kind of decent talks with people involved and uh, looks going in the right direction, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, from my perspective, that's kind of, I guess, the, the next target. And uh, it, it's, it's just good because... The lack, you know, I said a year ago, there's only two leagues really to play in professionally. So, and there's a lot more than, you know, was it 32 plus not 32 NFL, nine CFL? You know, there's a lot more professional caliber players out there than there is teams. You know, there's a lot more demand than there is. So now the fact that these two leagues have come along and I think the XFL is being owned, is owned by The Rock and a few of the different kind of investors in it, but Dwayne Johnson, when I say The Rock. So 
uh, you know, he's he's mega. So having him involved, I've seen he's been at a lot of the workouts and showcases around the US and, you know, that's just going to bring such kind of hype and eyes to it. So, you know, i confident it, w- it will go well and fingers crossed you'll be seeing the, the ginger Irish fella out there about some balls. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed. And, and it seems as though that it's being done um, correctly this time. Not saying, it, well, it, it seems to, The Rock is putting everything into it. Even just looking at the caliber of head coaches that he's bringing yeah. into this league, like uh, Wade Phillips, uh, you know, Ron Woodson is there too. You know, you've got so many, um, so many good coaches, and and you know we have the eight teams at the moment. This goes well. This first season, we could see it expanded to a few more teams, which, like we mentioned, is still more and more opportunities for players to to get their shot. Exactly. Um, and the good, the interesting about the XFL was actually last year when the, or excuse me, this year when the US USFL launched. You know, people were kind of curious about you know, the ex because they're going. You know, they could see them as competitors because they're both around the similar time of year. Um, you know, competing to be the next best league after the NFL. Um, but the XF the XFL came out pretty early and said, "Nah, we're not going to do 2022, but we're going to do 2023 right." And you know, like that's the infrastructure that, as you mentioned, they put in place and the coaches and uh, class coaches. So everything points towards you know being a, cl- a really really good league. And the, the version in 2020. They were actually doing well. I think they were through week four or five. I was back still playing rugby at the time, but they were through week four or five and you know, getting you know, getting good crowds, you know, 30, 50, 30 to fifty thousand to games. I, I was reading an article, they were getting good T V numbers and unfortunately COVID hit and then you know, I think it was Vince McMahon was the owner, um, the wrestler fella. So they they filed for bankruptcy. But I yeah, it's it's looking like the XFL is gonna be be a pretty huge league and uh, I'm just kinda hoping they talk about wanting to be quite international. Uh, have an international component to it, so hopefully that in you know that will open up more opportunities for for lads like myself who don't come from a traditional background, but you know we can play and we can we can contribute. So you know just the fact your passport doesn't stamp American, you know hopefully that's not really held against you too much. So yeah, fingers crossed the XFL is going to be is going to be a good look and give lads a lot of opportunities. Yeah, definitely, definitely, and we we hope we get to see you in in the XFL, if not the you know the USFL in, in something anyway in yeah. over the next coming weeks and months, uh, Ty. But listen, I I won't keep you too much longer. Before we do let you go, just a quick recap of um the the events going on this weekend. So like you mentioned, on Saturday and Sunday, you're in Cork and Limerick respectively. Um, yeah. where where in Cork and Limerick um will people need to go if they want to take part? Yeah. In uh, so in Cork or in uh, Musgrave, Musgrave Park, the stadium there, the Munster used quite a bit. Um, that's at 11 a.m. on this Saturday, coming August 20th, and then the 21st, we're up in UL, uh, University of Limerick, that is. So on the field there, and then the, the last two events would be the 24th is up in Belfast and Belfast Harlequins, uh, that's a Thursday evening, I believe, and then our final Dublin event will be on the 26th at Railway Union Rugby Club. And I appreciate a lot of days thrown at you there. So basically, if you go to leaderkicking.com, I'm just trying to centralize everything there. If you go to leaderkicking.com, you, you, you have to find the kind of date, that event near you, say. And um, yeah, I just encourage you to come along. It's, it's a bit of crack learn. And even if you're a rugby player or a GEA player, for example, uh, I do maybe 30 minutes of coaching at the start. Um, and there's so much of what I'd be kind of talking about in coaching is directly applicable to kicking a rugby ball or getting football off the ground. You know, a lot of things, your foot angle, your foot to ball contact, whether that's American football, Gaelic football or rugby or soccer, it doesn't really matter. You, like, those things have to be the same. So there's 30 minutes of coaching and then we jump into the kicking challenge. It's kind of like what people would go through in an NFL workout. Obviously not as serious as that would be. Your life isn't on the line almost, but uh, j- again, go through that and then, you know, prizes, etc. on the back of that. So, yeah, leaderkicking.com is your best bet. Excellent. Um, and like that there, it, you actually give a sort of, we mentioned that you're doing some work there with, with off the ball on news talk and you sort of gave the, the, the two GEA lads a bit of a clinic there at the start as well, a bit of coaching. So if, the, if people want to know, they should check out that video. So give them sort of idea what they're in store for when it comes to coaching and stuff like that on the day. But Ty, like you mentioned, it's, it's been fantastic to have you back on. Um, it's a great uh, idea to set this up and um, fantastic to get more eyes on uh, American football here in Ireland so we ta- thank you very much for that and then um, we hope the rest of the events go well Sam and there, cheers, appreciate it 
No problem at all. No problem at all. And that's where we're going to wrap up this edition of the show. Um, thanks to uh, Jake earlier on for hopping on too to um, look at our reviews of the divisions. We'll be back next week looking at a few more divisions too. Um, you can catch, if you miss any of the show, you can catch it back on YouTube. We'll have them all in separate videos for you. Just search Under Center Podcast. The socials at Under Center Pod for Instagram and Twitter. They're both the same. But until next time, stay safe and we'll see you soon.